And when he had opened the fifth seal, now the first four, you know, were the false, um, uh, false Christ with the, the false gospel and war and famine and pestilence. And now came the, the great tribulation. So now notice here. And when he had opened the fifth seal, that's the next one after the four horsemen, I saw under the altar of them that were slain for the word of God. In other words, the martyrs. And uh, they opened, uh, and they cried with a loud voice. Now, they're already dead, but they seem to be crying out, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou uh, not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Those are the martyrs that were killed back in the time of the apostles and in the Middle Ages. And white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season, and that was in their graves where they were resting, dead, until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were. That is those here at this last time. There's going to be another martyrdom of saints, and it'll come during the Great Tribulation. And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, now, I said in the sixth seal, after the Great Tribulation, what was going to come? They were going to see the Son of Man in heaven immediately after the Tribulation, and then that would result, and finally the, the sun and the moon would be dark, and then Christ would come. Now notice here in Revelation, same thing. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, uh, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as a sackcloth, and the moon became uh, as blood. They didn't give their light any longer. That's to happen yet. And the stars of the heaven, just exactly as Matthew 24 had it. And the heaven departed as a scroll, as it was rolled together. And every mountain and every island were moved out of their places, the kings of the earth and the great men, chief captains and the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, hid out to for rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of him they saw sitting on the throne. This is the time when they see up in the sky and even see the sign of the coming of Christ just before he comes. Now that brings us down to the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation. I want to read just a little of that and we won't have time to go on, I think, uh, any further, but I do want to read a little bit of the seventh chapter of Revelation. And I still have time. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that they should not blow on the earth, neither on the sea, nor on any tree. Now these are the trumpet plagues. In the time of the trumpet plagues have come, as you read on, if you read on past this, and you blow on a trumpet, so these winds represent the winds that blow on these trumpets, and they are plagues that are to come at the beginning of the day of the Lord. That's what the book of Revelation is all about, the day of the Lord. And at the very beginning, God holds back these plagues. Now, the plagues come from God. The Great Tribulation really is a result of Satan's wrath and anger. The Great Tribulation came because of the sins of the world. But the plagues that follow, God is going to send. 
Now I want you to notice what's going to happen now just before God's plagues come. The great tribulation is all over now. And I saw another angel ascending from uh, the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the uh, uh, earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea. These plagues that hurt the earth and the sea rather than people, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, I want you to notice they were already the servants of God. That is the church. And it is the Philadelphia era of the church. And there are two other passages in the book of Revelation, in the 12th chapter and also in the 3rd chapter of Revelation, that shows that the church, and it's of this era of the church, is to be taken to a place of protection and safety from the Great Tribulation. We'll not have had to go through and suffer in the Great Tribulation. But they are the servants of God, which shows it's the church that are serving God. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and it was 144,000, and we won't take the time to read all of that, but it was 12,000 of each of the tribes, and Dan was left out, but Joseph had the two tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, so it was still twelve tribes. Now, and after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and people and languages, stood before the throne and uh, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. Now that is the righteousness of saints. Now this is uh, other people that are righteous, and they're going to be protected from God's plagues, just like the children of Israel were protected from God's plagues in the days of Moses, back uh, when, when the plagues were coming on Pharaoh of Egypt and uh, palms in their hands. Now, I won't read every verse, but skipping down now to verse 13. And one, let's see, and then one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these? which are arrayed in the white robes, this innumerable multitude. And where do they come from? Whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. In other words, John, who was writing this, didn't know. He said to the angel, You know. And he said to me, John is writing, These are they which came out of it says great tribulation in the King James, but others say the great tribulation. They were converted during the great tribulation. An innumerable multitude. Brethren, I want to tell you, all the t every little while I meet people who have listened to our radio program for years. And I meet others who've read the plain truth for years, and we've never heard from them. They've gotten this truth and haven't done anything about it. There are millions that we are reaching. The plain truth goes out six, uh, no, seven million copies every month now in seven different languages. Now, surely at least two people read every copy, and most magazines estimate that four people read every copy. And if they do with other magazines, I'm sure they do with the plain truth. Millions are hearing and doing nothing about it. But when these things happen and the great tribulation does come that I've been prophesying and nobody else has been foretelling it, but our telecast and our broadcast and the Plain Truth magazine, and we've been telling millions of people about it, and when it actually happens, many of them are going to do something about it. And that's this innumerable multitude. 
Now, you can't find any other explanation. The 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, you go back and read in the New Testament, and you find that in the 11th chapter of Romans, all of the ancient Israelites are broken off of the Israel tree and no longer are like branches of a wild olive tree and grafted into the Israel tree. And so, those in the church that have the Holy Spirit are spiritually Israel. And the 144,000 merely represent the church. Now, to say that it's exactly 12,000 out of each tribe, and to take that literally, the book of Revelation is in symbolic language, and you have to see it symbolically. God isn't going to take it and then refuse, after the 12,000 refuse, the 12,000 uh, and first one, uh, that he can't get in. So it merely represents a com complete number. Twelve is a uh, number of beginnings and completeness, and consequently it does represent the church. And then another innumerable multitude. Now they naturally come into the church, but that will be the Laodicean church, the seventh and last era of the church. Now, they are people that will finally come because they're frightened into it. And I think you will find that half of them will maybe receive the Holy Spirit, but they won't stick. And half of them, the oil will go out of their lamps. In other words, I'm referring now to the 25th chapter of Revelation and the Ten Virgins. Just before the second coming of Christ, that has to be the lay of the same church. They're lukewarm as the Laodicean church is. They come in because they're frightened and scared. But half of them are going to get through. Then the doors are shut into the kingdom. Half of them are left out. Then it comes, beginning with verse 31, in the 25th chapter of Matthew, of uh, the time of Christ sitting on his throne, and all nations will be before him, and he'll divide them as the shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And to those on his right hand, the sheep, he will say, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom. They will inherit the kingdom of God, and that will be in the beginning of the millennium. So I've given you just a quick bird's eye view from the beginning clear down into the kingdom of God and the time of the day of the Lord. We've been in the day of Satan for 6,000 years. There's so much more in the way of prophecies to be filled in. I won't take any more time at this present time. But I think we've got to get back and study uh, a, a little more now in the uh, prophecies. I think I shall probably go back into prophecies a little more on the air, on the television program. Because things are going to begin to happen very soon now, I feel. I think that God has delayed things in order that this message can get out. But I think the time of that delay is about up. And remember, there's not much time, and we are the ones who have got to inherit that kingdom, and we are called as the first fruits to learn, and not just to get us into the kingdom, but that we can then rule and teach. We'll be kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We are the saints that will take the kingdom and possess it when Christ comes.